Hello and welcome to a game two, Australia versus New Zealand. It's the boys, they're up. We're here at Belmain Road Sporting Ground in Sydney. Uh, it's the Trans-Tasman Series and uh, after an amazing first game, we're here for game two. My name's Stefan Van Boxtel and I have Gus with me here. Yep. Welcome. How you going? How you going, Stefan? Going very well. I'm super pumped. It's been a great day already and uh, yeah, this game. I'm sure the boys have gone and had a chat. Coaches have had a word. Yep, yep. Obviously, uh, very tight finish in the first game as the Australian boys run down. Balls fielded by Whitlock. Oh, oh, straight away D from Prendergast. Very early on, that's intensity. He's got the legs for it, he's going to run all day. Tom Boyle, the man who forgot his cleats this morning. <laughs> sure did. Thank you, Captain. He's got the disc, he's got every throw. Let's see what he's got to start us off. Thumps it back to Hodgson. He's looking upfield, looking for an inside break. Goes to Boyle on a dump. It's a great dump cut from Boyle. Oh, whips it across the other oh. side of the field. Oh. John O'Jones Jones with a uh, recovery layout, not quite there. Mm. Whitlock to pick it up for New Zealand's second attempt on offense. Hits Fitzpatrick Cockrum on the under, who shoots it deep to Rolf. Oh, the hand over the back. <laughs> Is foul called? They'll have a chat. Yeah, a bit of a chat about it. Let's see. If we can. Okay. Tracked to the call. So Australia going to pick it up. Looked pretty tight. It was tight. Jones did touch the disc first. It was just, I guess, whether that affected the play, if it's uh, landing on top. <laughs> Athletic play, though. New Zealand look like they're setting up in a bit of a zone. We saw this a bit in the first game. Tom Boyle generally looking for that crossfield hammer to get out of it. I have to see what happens here, though. Every yard is in the middle. He's going to run all day. Boyle straight away through the cup. He's through to Prendergast. Looking across field. Finds Walker. Victorian boys with a connection here. Boyle again. Oh. Look at that. He, he just wants yeah. it. You can see oh, the gaps. He hits it. It's a down call. Oh, incredibly down call. It's one, if it touched one blade of grass, it's a down call. So Did it touch that blade of grass? Oh, it must be, must be yeah. a lot of grass out there. <laughs> Need to mow it before the next game. As Whitlock gets very close to the line here, he's knocking on the door. Hammer, cross to Rolf. Catches it, New Zealand go up 1-0. Exciting point though. A few turns, Stefan. Yeah, look, we're in for a game. The, the boys are up for it. There's that early D uh, and... Look, the, the boys look a little bit more settled than when they came out first game. And yep. we, I mean, we've got a couple of throwaways through the cup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, Boyle's looking, he's looking aggressive. He is looking aggressive. But uh, I like it. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's good stuff. So New Zealand are going to come out on D. They've been, uh, they've been doing a bit of everything on D in the last game. They had some, uh, some poachy looks, some straight matches, and uh, some more conventional zones as well. Don't know if, if you've noticed, Stefan, Max and I like to talk about this in the last game, but uh, the difference between the approach on the line. Australians have the whole team there, New Zealand, just the, uh, just the seven players and the coach. Look, I've seen this come into uh, Aussie Ultimate the last couple of years. We all love the Neil, the full, the Neil the train. One. The Neil. Yeah. The Neil train, I like yeah, that. Yeah, are you on board the Neil train? I'm all about it. All yeah, about it. Sport. Get the whole squad there. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I'm not about the slow walk off. I love oh, the fast okay. Walk. Like a jog. Bit of urgency. Yeah, yeah, cool. But uh, New Zealand is, yep, they'll do their thing. Anta Hagen with his hand up, he'll be a, a central part of this uh, this hand line. He's already he's looking to receive that disc. Yeah, sure is. Off the centering pass from Matt Hanna. Oh, aggressive throw down the line, kid. Alan, the kid, kid. Dumps it off to Ant. He's 
looking quite aggressive with these throws. He wants to make something happen here. Oh, Jono oh, pushes oh, through the crowd. Yeah, I think that's going to be a foul call. Uncontested foul call. That was Graydon Scott with the layout from New Zealand. He's got a bit of the man there, I think. That's aggression on his run. It's very impressive. He's, he, Hagen looking for the pass off. Quick disc. <laughs> hey, you got to wonder if, if, uh, if there was another player receiving that disc, if it wouldn't have been over his head. Hagen looking for every second pass. Whips too it over aggressive. to Alan the Kid Kid, but just a little bit too much. Uh, Hagen knows it's a bit too much. Not happy with himself. And it's going to be Graydon Scott for New Zealand to go and pick that up in the far end zone corner. That's a pretty difficult spot to have the disc, I think. They won't mind wind. that, yeah, mm. absolutely. Early cut long. Post off, who's that? Ooh, On the other sideline. No, I'm not sure. Number 25. Jono Keyes looking back to O'Hagan. Not got heaps of options downfield. Oh, hits the unknown man who got the D, number 25 for Australia. Swings it around. It's patient offense. Being a hostile count here. Puts it up. And New Zealand has come down with it. That is number nine, Josh Driscoll, who had a sensational game earlier on. Oh, kid looked like he was going to lay out there, but didn't quite leave his feet. Driscoll and Mercer just working it at the back. Jack Doyle comes in now. And it's a pick called. Disc returned. Yeah, I think Doyle just maybe snuck through the stack there. Julio Madhana. A little bit of a pick. It is Mercer with the disc. No movement from the New Zealanders. Could be in trouble here. Looks back at his dump. Well, that must have been high on the store count. Sean McEwen with it now. Hits Driscoll. Struggling to get it downfield and a bit of a miscommunication there. Driscoll runs into his teammate Luke Rave. Yeah, absolutely. Captain O's got to be, in, uh, Coach O's got to be really impressed with that man, D. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pressure. Sitting under, or loving it. Who was that Hagen, too? Hagen zips it across. I think it was just He's not sure. generally to someone in the stack. Hey, seems like he's still having a good time, O'Hagan. Eh, always, <laughs> always a smile on the face. A timeout called now. Early timeout. Early timeout. Oh, how do you feel about midpoint timeouts, Stefan? Maxi, who who's who loves to be in the commentary box, very critical of them. I'm, I'm on board with Maxi. Uh, no, I I think it's a momentum killer, and I think you should just uh, be able to take that second to walk to the disc as to that timeout. Yeah. Um, I feel like they're more crucial. Um, between points later on. I don't know. I'm yeah. just, how about yourself? <coughs> yeah, I guess it all depends. I think in a situation like that in the corner, you don't want to cu come out with the Australians being able to set up. Uh, it's going to be really difficult first cut, unless they're looking to, you know, they've got some sort of set play. Be interested to see it, but if I was the Australians, I'd either set up a zone or set up some sort of poachy look that makes it very difficult for that initiating cut. Absolutely. I think it, like you're in such a, like, a, a dangerous position on the field now. If you were able to get a quick break throw, uh, even get 20, 30 metres up the field, mm -hmm. and then wanted to time out and reset, like I know we don't, they don't say that too often, but uh, yeah, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing, dangerous game to play. But uh, trust your, your set plays. Yep, yep. And uh, we were talking a little bit about Josh, Josh Driscoll during that point. He got a few Ds and had a great first game. Got a little bit of information on him here. He's been playing for just over a year from Auckland. And uh, he's also represented his province. I think that's what that's saying. His province in indoor cricket. That's pretty uh, pretty interesting. As he's a very explosive player. I wonder if that's uh, from the indoor cricket. Those four metre runs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the New Zealanders setting up number 82, Luke Mercer, on the disc. 
Alan Kidd. It's a tough matchup with Driscoll. Starting to move it now, the New Zealanders. Oh, but an interception there from the Australians. Push pass off to John O'Keys. Got a few options. Doesn't want any of them though. He's looking at O'Hagan instead. Oh, and it's a great D there. Stepping across for the point block, Graydon Scott. That was great downfield D, man. That really, a really, really difficult cut. As the New Zealanders look to go upfield now. Oh, it's just too much. And that disc up the line to Driscoll. O'Hagan picking it up. Looking very calm. Instantly jacks it. Oh, and that's a D, I think, from number four, Luke Rabe. New Zealand stretching the stack a little bit more now. Looking at the West static going earlier. The disc has to go back, though. Sean McEwen stuck with the disc now a little bit. Not too many options. Goes oh. to Driscoll. Can't quite get a hand on it. That defensive pressure, fantastic, especially yeah. this late in the point. They've kept it up, but uh, it's this part that's been the issue. That's right. It's looking very difficult to, uh, to get it moving for both teams. So it's uh, Julio, Hannah with the disc coming in on the sideline. Graham's looking earlier off the front of the stack. Looks off Graham. Oh. Hits keys, and it's another D from Graydon Scott. This time he's laying out. Can do it all. Block on the mark, lay out. And now he's going to throw the disc. Let's see what he can produce. Driscoll going up the line. And he's going to hit him. Oh, just got a full hand on it. With some people streaming deep as well. That looks very good for the New Zealanders. But unfortunate drop means that O'Hagan has the disc. Hits Alan the Kid, Kid under. That's a good flow from the Australians. Here's Hannah. That's a goal. Yes, that's what we're after. It's a... Uh to an open player. We've seen a few too many 50-50s. <laughs> oh, hang on. Bit of a call. Pick call. Be a bit of discussion here, I think. Retracted. The goal will stand. That is one apiece. Celebration 2.0. <laughs> yes. yes. Seems a bit artificial now, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I liken it to, uh, you know, the cricket, the review. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit of a hollow victory, really, isn't it? It's got to go. By the third man. As we see here, O'Hagan just working it down that sideline with Kidd. Makes a pretty good dump cut up here. Punches it in for the goal. Matt Hunter in quite a bit of space. Yeah. The conversation would have been whether it was, you know, within three metres, whether mm. you know, it was affecting. So, one all here, 13 minutes played. So, they're quite long points so far. Uh, really taking a bit of time. I bet both teams will be looking to get a nice, clean, offensive point. Nice and quick. These boys uh, coming on the field for Australia now had a lot of sideline to start off the game. So, uh, let's see what they can bring. Boiler gives it a rip. It's going to float down. It's pretty gust. For nine, Campbell Newman is working it with Whitlock there at the back. They were pretty important in the first game for the New Zealanders. Newman breaking through to Fitzpatrick Cockrum. To Rolf. Really getting some movement here. Back to Rolf for New Zealand. He's going to look deep. Fitzpatrick Cockrum in the pack. Oh, hard to say what went wrong there. I'd say Tommy Butler might have got him with a hand. Just a hand sneak, snuck in through the gap. I don't know how. And they're going to set up a zone, the New Zealanders. Bit of a plan, clearly. It's quite a close cup. There's a lot of space over if they can get it to, uh, to Hodgson. And I think Hodgson's in some good space here. Absolutely. Tommy Butler on the disc, if he can see it. Oh, he's going to do the... Oh, boils all over it. But a boil, boils. That's a, good, oh, that's a great throw out to Hodgson. It's lovely. Oh, that's lovely as well. They're looking great, the Australians, with this offensive movement. Butler, Boyle. To Lely now. Oh, he rips it through to Feng. That's a great throw. Nick Lely, he's the kind of man you want behind the disc on these Zono points. He's absolutely ripped it through to Feng there. I, 
absolutely love seeing these under 20s boys trust their throws. Yeah. So Boyle break it op open early. Uh, Lely then just saying, I see a gap and hit. So 2-1 uh, now. 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. Yeah. That's a break for the Australians. A nice quick break as well. Only two minutes at that point. And again, the full knee. We've got all the coaches on, in there, everyone involved. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we do have three game advisors here today to help the, uh, the young guys with some of their rules. Making some non-binding um, judgment-based decisions. Paddy Graham with the disc. Left hand, I believe, so maybe he's going to float it out into the, uh, into the wind. Let's it rip Whitlock and Newman underneath it. Newman lets it drop, and it's a good rundown from the Australians, setting up a zone. Newman in a difficult spot. Definitely Callahan country over to Whitlock. He gets it out to Rolf. That's a good throw. Rolf just holding it, looking back. Oh, bit of a touch there from James Walker, who lays out. Whitlock, oh, I thought he was going to rip it. Just working now with Coxall Bagaki. That's a name. Rory Coxall Bagaki. Whitlock, lovely throw over the top to Newman, who pierces the gap to Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Oh, just a bit of a miscue, and he shot for the goal. And the Australians had the disc again. Everyone in the artist looks to pump it, holds on for a second. No turnovers in the first game. He's doing very well. Lely with the disc. Mark takes his time getting to him, but he has nothing to throw to. It's back to Everyn Yardis. Finds the space to Lely. Keeps the disc moving. Prendigas looking into the stack. Graham streaming through. It's a fairly static start at the moment. Not a lot. Having starting to move now. There's a deep cut. Oh, that's a great throw from Lely. Oh, the ball from Harry Graham in the corner. Just not connecting there for Harry Graham. A little bit of encouragement from the opposition there. Like, yeah. Uh, look, you ran yeah, well. Oh, they're nice guys in the New Zealanders. Absolutely. They give them a lot of stick for their accents, but they're good people. Whitlock walking up to the line now. He's a confident thrower. He's got all, all the throws in the book. Just getting it over to Coxall Bagaki by Newman. Back to Newman now. Rolf in a bit of space out on the sideline if they can get it over to him. But cramped in that corner for the time being. Oh, bit of a sniff there from Harry Graham. This cup working very effectively for the Australians at the moment. They're not willing to go over the top. Oh, great grab from Whitlock. Under a lot of pressure there. Throws the hammer. Yeah, I think something had to happen there. They were getting... Really cramped in that space. The hammer to Fitzpatrick Cockrum not quite coming off. Lely picking it up, calling for the diagonal. Yep. Australia committing a lot of players to that corner, but it worked really effectively. Quite deep the diagonal, but it doesn't seem to matter as the disc goes out to Walker. Continuation to Graham. Got a few options to go, but did well to holster it. Back to Lely now. Look at him run. Looking very hard. Look He's at his hair bounce. He swings it across the nickel. Oh, oh, the hand on. And Lely wanted that goal. He's, uh, he's quite a character to watch out there on the field, is Nick Lely. Playing like he had somewhere to be after this point. <laughs> yeah, he done. really did, didn't he? Yeah, he's running late for a dental appointment or something. <laughs> really wanted to get that point done. I'm all for seeing more of that hair flopping around. Right yeah. around Big hammer over the top. New Zealanders really struggling with that zone, looking for a quick release. Yeah. After a couple of early really... Uh, positive workups in the field. They're getting a little bit impatient. Mm -hmm. uh, a good zone can do that to you. Bit of a confused looking stack. Not sure if this is a diagonal. It's very deep if it is. I think it is. Gonna have to be a really strong cut. Mm, Nichols does well. Yeah, they're in trouble now. Just goes across to Pat Graham. Yeah, pretty comfortable. And hits Harry Graham for the goal. It's uh, obviously a set play 
from the Australians off the sideline. Yep. Uh, didn't work, but having Pat Graham sitting in the middle of the oh. stack as you're out. He's pretty. He's pretty good uh, release valve, isn't he? <laughs> if in doubt, he's probably going to catch it. He's a big fella. He's been playing really well today. I think that diagonal stack that they're looking to set up uh, is a little bit deep, making it quite difficult to hit those throws because your defender has a lot of time to catch up. So we just see the replay here of that goal. Australians still up and about on the sideline though. Definitely the momentum with the Aussies, I would say. Three one now. All of a sudden, it's really snuck up on us. Australians three on the trot. I think that means looking for another break here to make it four one. Earlier on, you might have noticed uh, a bit of wind conditions, especially in the earlier streams today. Um, do you really do you think it's an still an effector? Uh, it's really settled down a bit, hasn't it? But we're still seeing a lot of zone. Uh, maybe because of the space, it's not the biggest field that we're playing on today. Really cramping. The offense with those zone looks, uh, which we're not seeing this time. We're just seeing a match defense. Oh, Rowan Burns takes a great grab under pressure from O'Hagan. Dumps it back. Hamish Ford looking for an inside, doesn't come off. Bales out to Whitlock. The hammer doesn't throw it. It's got Ford. Potentially, but he goes back. Yeah, just working through the handlers. Oh, Alan the kid, kid. He's still got it. He's going to go. Tommy Ball's going to rip that every day of the week. Oh. Not this day. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> he didn't rip it. He let me down. Tommy Butler with a diss now. Hodgson getting it under quite comfortably there. Got Boyle on the break side if needed. Looking to move downfield, looking aggressive through his first look always. O'Hagan, a bit of body on that, um, the defence, working hard. Kid through to Jones. Oh, it's a great grab by Jones. The longest man in WA finds a disc, but doesn't find Definitely. a Cons Conservation of greatness is uh, something we always need to be considering. If you're just something good, just easy dump, I reckon. As the New Zealanders come away with it. Whitlock, oh, that lovely high release flick to Rolf. Does well to catch it. Moving now through Burns. Back to Whitlock, New Zealanders threatening. It's a great high release sweep to Ford, who wants to do one of his own, but he does a hammer instead to Rolf. Oh, that's a great grab from Tane Rolf. Does really well to get up over Jones there. Looking good for the New Zealanders. Rolf is, of course, one of the returners we were talking about a bit earlier on in our broadcast this morning. Uh, coach Mike Sheridan was that man manager and coach uh, Warren Buckingham just uh, seemed to settle the troops a little bit yeah yep. uh, they spread the field spread the defence fairly well um, there was a lot of free space those high release flicks really uh, just catching catching the defence off guard a little bit it's a great throw that um, Whitlock has been talking about a bit today that high release flick coming out really nicely he's a tall dude already so he's um <laughs> Really doing some damage with those throws. But it, it is quite a short team that the New Zealanders have. 16. So might be getting a bit tired throughout the day. This is the second day, second game of the day. Number 82, Luca Mercer with the disc. Out of Auckland. <laughs> Say a short team uh, in terms of numbers, but in terms of stature, this Australian <laughs> lineup is big. Yes. Coming out now. Yes. They're loaded up. Lally with the disc. There is a zone <laughs> on. Lally just looking for the, the easy one off from John O'Keys. John O'Keys, oh, looks powerful in that handler position. Yeah, very dynamic. He's he threatening. There's something about his look. The look he's giving his players. 
but he uses Pat Graham's uh, big around to get around <laughs> that cup, though. Why not? Paddy Graham popping in his own. Probably feels a bit... Oh, jacked it. It's got speed. Incredible, Hannah has yeah. a disc. Oh, flick that's a across. lovely cross flick. That's great work there from Hannah and Julio. It goes to Lachlan Eichner for the goal. Again, it's the big confident throw from uh, Lely, who uh, manages to break open the field. He does. I'm not sure if it was caught on camera there, but Tom Butler just leapfrogged, leapfrogged Tipman Wong. Not really sure why. <laughs> Looked pretty cool, though. Fair question is why not? Yeah, why not? Why not, Tom Butler? Lely, just really penetrative throws against this zone so far. He's really ripping it to shreds. New Zealand is looking a, a little bit dejected, you could say. It's, it's difficult to tell, but uh, definitely the momentum with the Australians again here. The bonus of a, loud, of a big side line is that noise. You can, it's hard yeah. to tell, um, but New Zealand, if you look at the, um, how they went around nationals with the Wildcats, I mean, that's the, only, that's the latest start uh, New Zealand team I've yeah. seen alive. And they had a calm and measured approach. It wasn't a um, scream and yell kind of team. Mm -hmm. um, and that worked, obviously, fantastically, taking them all the way to the final. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good hand signals as well to the Wildcats and the New Zealanders. Great observation. Good spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, good luck with the disc. It's this poachy um, D set up from the Australians. Instantly broken with a throw over to Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Launches it deep. Oh, that is an absolute snag from Whitlock. I believe, actually, uh, Max and I were talking about this in the last game. Nicholas Whitlock, on the, under the question, uh, what are you most looking forward to? He says some sweet hucks and money grabs. Would you class that as a money grab, Look, Stefan? It's up there. Up there. <laughs> What is there a scale of uh, one to money grab? Like? Oh, I'm not sure. Well, I did pay $8.50 for a mango smoothie earlier today. So, on a scale of one to eight dollars fifty for a mango smoothie, how money was that grab? Oh, solid four dollars thirty latte. Four dollars thirty latte. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Australians they got a big sideline because they've got uh, the Terra girls and the Australian A squad watching on. They also have some friends and family on the sideline, which is good to see. It's a uh, good travelling party with the uh, New Zealanders as yeah, well. Yeah, just noticing that now, actually. Very divided sideline, actually. <laughs> Got the Australians and the New Zealanders on the left and right. See if you can point that one out or <laughs> notice that one during the next point, uh, which is coming soon. It is 4-3, so no one pulling away at this stage. 28 minutes played. It was seventy, sorry, 80 minute game. Yeah, it was commented a few points ago that Australia had the momentum. Uh, again, in their calm way, New Zealand just pegging a couple back and yeah. uh, before you know it. Look. Yeah, without even realising it, I yeah. think New Zealand have snuck back the momentum. As the pull goes down, Lely receiving it. It's going to go a nice, gentle centering pass to Hodgson. Oh, some steps there for Harry Graham. Driscoll in pursuit and he gets the D. Josh Driscoll has been a D machine today. So uh, Kylo really willing to um, mix up these lines. Keep it fresh at the moment. You've got a lot of players playing O, playing D. Yeah, sure do. Good to see playing through the whole squad here, Australia. New Zealand as well, because they only have 16 players. Whitlock with the disc. Oh, Lely looks, looks for the vid. He doesn't lay out often, Lely, but when he does, it's spectacular. Hits Rolf. Rolf hits Driscoll, sorry. Driscoll now with the disc. Good dump back to Whitlock. Whitlock's got some... Ooh, Look deep to Rolf there, but decided not. Yeah, that, that, that is an unbelievable layout from Alan the Kid Kid. He represented his state or a very high level in long jump. And he jumped pretty long just then. Oh. Sensational layout D from Alan the Kid Kid. Look, he guaranteed won a game with, at least with him. He's just an incredible athlete and brings that to the team. He really is. Swing around to Seth. Alan's going to want this disc. He's going to want this goal, I reckon. Surely. You feel the momentum just pick up off an energetic act like that. O'Hagan puts it over throw. the top. Lely's looking. Oh, but just over him to Rolf. Driscoll was unhappy with himself. Didn't realise his teammate had got the D. 
Now he's burning deep, but it's not going to come. Disc is deep in the end zone for New Zealand. They're in there. Ooh, high stall in Callahan country. It's not what you want. Rolf gets it. Oh, Driscoll's going. And you think the disc would be going as well, but it's not. Rolf hits Whitlock up the line. Just looking for that next pass out of the New Zealanders. A little bit stuck now. Looking back to their dump. Mm, nice easy dump pass back to Newman. Whitlock and Newman just running this offense at the moment. He's ripped it in to number four, Luke Rabe. Maybe not enough on it. Difficult throw. There's that layout D again. Goodness me, that was head high. Oh, that would be a great angle. Oh, wow. Bounces straight back up, of course. Great D. Over to Hagen. Lely's looking for it under. Gets it pretty easily. Hodgson's got some steps deep. Oh. This down. New Zealand picking it up in uh, danger zone. Danger zone on the doorstep is Whitlock. He does well in this position, or he did in the first game anyway. He's got all the throws. He throws, ooh, a blade, he highly flick to Rolf. Oh. They oscillated that player. It's an unusual throw to go to, though. The yeah, there's some people in the way of me. I have absolutely no idea what happened in that. Oh, yeah. Massive deflection. And a uh, good little battle. I love those secondary battles. Case of the disc. Oh, big swing around to Hodgson. Hodgson wants to jack yeah. it and does. Yeah, that's Kid. what the people want. Well, oh, there it is. is. He's going to celebrate. Oh, <laughs> The spike from it. <laughs> Look at that hair go. Look at him get those head, head, head noogies. They love him. And we love him. Noogie is an underused word. <laughs> I think so. I haven't heard it in a while, actually. <laughs> Don't know where it came from. Yeah, pretty stoked with that one, the Australian. Hodson really let it rip. Not sure who it was to. I suppose it doesn't matter in the end. Oh, it's a great grab from Lely, and of course his trademark celebration. He's been pulling it out at Lee quite a bit. The fake spike, elbow spike elbow combo. Spike, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange one. Looks like he's going to smack it into the ground. Pulls it out at the last second. And then hits it with his elbow. That was an exciting point. Yeah. You know, what was fantastic about that point is the flexibility of the Aussie line. We've seen... Early Hodson going long, he's back, mm. he's throwing that huck to Lely who's been handling that whole point. Yep. They're <laughs> just running, the, like, and they keep on going, keep on running. Keep on running. Some great Ds as well. Oh. From Kid. Spectacular layout. Can't underestimate the pressure either uh, to, get to, to get throwaways. Momentum really shifting backwards and forwards. Tommy Boy with the disc now, he's going to give it a rip. I'm going to get underway. Whitlock, there to receive the pull. Oh, sen forward centers to Whitlock. 34 is in a little bit of space here. Russell Sider. Harley's flick over the top. It's done well by Fitzpatrick Cockrum. Threads it back for Whitaker. He grabs it despite the pressure of Feng. A few options and just calmly punches it in. The New Zealand offense was. Looking pretty slick just then. Stefan, I, I don't know, there's momentum's going up and down, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I find that zone really effective from the Australians first up, that 2-3-2. Two, two. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on the first couple of throws. We saw this, saw this in the first game as well. Uh, they looked really strong for the first few throws. New Zealand kind of find a bit of space for the huck, uh, and that kind of stretches it a little bit. Um, Kyle O, coach, will probably look to manipulate that, whether it's used as a transition. Don't know, but they've got many looks. I'll keep trying them all, cycling through, see what they got. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's... The thing with a youth squad is maintaining that intensity at point to point, mm -hmm. uh, keeping it consistent, you know, being able to bring the energy when you're not uh, winning the point. That's right, it is 5-4 now. The Australian's up by one. Coming out on O here. It's a, um, a fast looking line. Not a lot of fast guys on there. 
I guess they're all fast, really, aren't they? Oh. They're slow ones. Look, I've been uh, I've been watching training for the last two days. I'm actually just blown away by the athleticism. Yeah, these young kids, they're uh, they're fast. They jump. It's frightening. And as uh, the pool comes up. Yeah, well, that's the kind of model that Kylo looks like. Yeah. For, as a, um, well, that's the way he plays. That's how the way he coaches. Explosive. O'Hagan, bit of a miscue. O'Hagan gave up on it. Maybe to the benefit of his team because <laughs> everyone has thought it was down. Tactical O'Hagan. He's got the disc looking downfield. He finds Seth Lovell streaming through. Had lots of space in the middle. Butterfly mm. stretching disc down. Lucky there from Tommy B. Luca Mercer walking to the disc. Some, oh, it's very active here from the New Zealanders. Unfortunate drop there from Sean McEwen. Prendergrass to pick it up. Oh, brave one-handed approach there from number 25, Hayden Barron. Trying to uh, stretch past the defender there. Like, New Zealanders one-on-one -on -one defense is really incredible. Graydon Scott now with the disc. He's going to rip it, and it's going to float. You get a lot of people under it. Some of them New Zealanders. Oh, sky each other. 25 Doyle comes away with it. Swings it back to Mercer. Over to McEwen. Oh, just another little bit of a miscue there from the New Zealanders. Look, the uh, Australian stat was stack was pretty static uh, on the last entrance into the end zone. They'll have another shot at it now. Tom Butler finding space under. He's looking downfield. Sam is going to get that close to the, the end zone. On the end zone line. Threads it Ooh, through. Oh, squirts it through the gap there. Every now and then. Just, he's looking relieved. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's looking a bit relieved on the in the Australian camp. And the cheeky little smile from Seth there. He knows. He's like, oh, oh, yep. He knows he got away with one there. He did well to get it, and he's just, yeah, just squeezing it right through the gap there. Now I'm coming New Zealand defender, maybe feels looking, would have had a play at it. That's a great firm throw, and the Australians now up 6-4. Looking pretty powerful out there. As we say, the momentum's been up and down, but the, the Australians definitely looking more confident. It's, uh, and... Uh, Better execution than in the first game as well, I would say. Much faster points. Sideline's starting to pick up here for both teams. Yeah, it's such a uh, it's a hard thing to bring a team together, and you can't expect first game to be firing. Mm. Uh, you played last campaign. How long do you think it took you before uh, you were switched in? As yeah, squad? well, um, so we, we went over to New Zealand for the last Trans-Hasman um, competition, last Trans-Hasman series, and uh, probably the first... I think it was maybe five points. We went down 5 nil or something in our first game. Uh, and we didn't really click until a bit later on. In maybe halfway through that first game, um, we turned it on a bit. But it, it is difficult playing, especially for a first Australian campaign, which it, it is for a lot of these guys, playing with uh, people from different states, getting used to different, uh, different playing styles. I believe I heard what, five returners. Five returners, yeah. Yeah. So, a lot of fresh blood out there. It's Campbell Newman who jacks it to Whitlock. Paddy Graham in pursuit. Oh, Whitlock does well. As does Graham, but unfortunately, unsuccessfully, dishes it to Driscoll for the goal. Yeah, I'm going to want to see that replay again. I love seeing Paddy Graham in flight. That is the third uh, little matchup between Graham and Whitlock as well. I think they had two in the first game that went one apiece. So maybe Whitlock's up 2-1 now. I'm happy if we uh, get a few more. <laughs> you really put on the burners there, Paddy. Unlucky not to, to get a piece of the disc there. Whitlock did have position though. I really like seeing Whitlock um, deeper in the field. Mm, yeah, he's, he's a great thrower, but he's a real threat downfield as well. He is a returning player for the New Zealanders. One of the experienced heads. Yeah, it's fantastic having some experience at an outlet downfield. Big target. Here we go. Whitlock and Graham. Uh, Whitlock had it every day of the week. Just got their first. Body position. Valiant bid from Graham, but ultimately unsuccessful. 6-5. 
Yeah, still no team really making a breakaway. 49, Campbell Newman with the disc. Uh, another fast line out to the Australians, as they all are. Prendergrass to receive it. And just hits a Hagen moving around the back. Lely on the break side. Julio's going deep. That's going to go. Julio's had a big effort. Well, unfortunate there. Yeah, throw. Just, uh, just kind of bulleted through the air rather than sit out in front. A bit too much, bit too much zip, yeah. It's difficult in this wind to know what, what the best approach is. Yeah. The thing about that wind being a little bit unpredictable at the moment, this very moment, there's nothing. Mm. But... Uh, as I say that, the breeze yeah. comes over the right shoulder. Every now and then, just get a little bit of a gust coming through. Campbell Newman's got the disc in the corner. New Zealanders have been trapped here before with good Australian match defence. Oh, it's a good switch there. It's a great switching defence from the Australians to stop any movement. Oh, kid should have caught it. <laughs> Our kid gets the D in the end zone. He's missed the opportunity for Galhan. He only just realised. Briefly forgot his rules. But nonetheless, it's given the Australians a great opportunity here on the doorstep. Kid looking for the bookends, I reckon. Going to be making the initiating cut. Oh, Lely. Surely Lely's got to look for him. Oh, Lely eats these situations up. Expect, expect something magic. Oh, the layup for Kid. The his team gets around. <laughs> Very much uh, can you blame him? If you drop a Callahan, you need to lay out yep. to catch the goal. Yep. Oh, look, that was that, um, that just uh, match defense pressure again. They're setting up with their men uh, underneath the cuts, uh, just stopping any unders. New Zealand's freaking out. Really difficult for the New Zealanders to get it moving. But, look, we saw early in the game that they responded really well uh, with a couple of um, different defensive looks on them. They, uh, they come around, they'll find another player. Here we go, kid. Oh, he could have clap caught it, really, on his chest. He had that much time. Timeout called by the Australians. Have to go eventually. Timeout. A nice strong timeout call by the manager Jack Jewell. <laughs> really strong Leading call. Leading the way. Yeah, Australians are pretty stoked with that one, as they should be. Kid did well. You ever uh, caught a Callahan? Oh, I have. Really? Off. Um, what was it Melbourne Hat? Second day. Everyone's in their finest form. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Josie Phillip, thank you. <laughs> Uh, I've never caught a Callahan, but I have thrown one. Oh, shit. It's not a great feeling. Don't Tr ask me about those. Tried to hit Mikey Lau on the swing. Just popped up. Fortunately, resulted in a Callahan, but less about me, more about this game. 7 5. Time out now. Called by the Australians just to, uh, just to check themselves, I think. Just take a bit of a moment and hopefully score this one. Yeah, I think that's a good take call. Take it to half. Yeah. What, do you what do you think? Uh, Coach O's saying. Oh, just, uh, more of the same. Keep uh, keep making those first initiating cuts really difficult for the New Zealanders with that uh, that switchy poachy under D. Um, yeah, keep hitting the shots. Keep catching your Callahans. So he was a uh, assistant coach when you were. Yep, Kylo was uh, assistant coach last year. Um, great player in his own right. Won a silver medal with the Barramundis. And, uh, of course, he's been doing a lot of work for development in Western Australia. So, great to see him in charge of his own team. These, uh, these boys look like they're trying to channel him as much as possible, trying to play the Kyle low way. It's a defensive harrier. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. I would, exp I would expect he's uh, getting those kind of words into his boys as well. That's right. On the uh, opposite side, what are you expecting from uh, New Zealand coach? Coach, I guess just uh, just reminding them that that in the first game they were capable of um, you know coming back. It really ebbed and flowed in the first game. Just reminding the New Zealanders that they can definitely do the same in this game. That they're not out of it by any means. It's only seven five. Yeah, that's the beauty of uh, energy and momentum. It feels like the Australians are up by a couple more. Mm. Uh, it's one breakaway. Mm -hmm. Just take a timeout, reset. Think about what's really going on out there. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see what's going to happen here. Tomboy with the disc for the pull. 
Got the two whistles from the game advisor, so I think the disc should be going up pretty soon. Alan the Kid Kid walking past, looking very cool. New Zealand is just trying to work it. Newman at the moment hits Whitlock straight back. He's got a few options. He's going to swing it around to Ford. Oh, difficult catch there by Ford. He's done well. Hamish Ford just using Nicholas Whitlock at the moment who hammers over the top. They needed that, the New Zealanders. Rolf now, the New Zealanders with some down for momentum. Hodgson with the run through D. Heads up. Heads up D there from Hodgson. Boiler chucks it deep. To the shortest man on the field, Fung. Over Ooh. the top. Interesting choice there from Boyle. I think he wanted a, a nice sharp blade to, uh, I think that's Lachlan Eichner out on the side line. He was in a bit of space, but it just floated a bit in this wind, which is unpredictable. Good play into the Australian's hands as Whitlock walks up to the line. He's going to be looking for that hammer again, I think. I always flick over to Hamish Ford. Who's himself a little bit stuck. Oh. 81. Daniel Linklater has just put a little bit too much on that. I think it's probably too much for Fitz Fitzpatrick Cockrum to pull in in the field. Boyle on the sideline looking straight downfield as normal. He's an aggressive player, as we've mentioned. Finds the around to Patrick Graham streaming through. Goes through the centre. Level. Dumped to Boyle. Again, looking end zone. Boyle wants that inside flick. Yeah. And he found it. <laughs> he found it. I could see it in his eyes. <laughs> he wanted that inside flick from the moment he had the disc in his hand. A lot of space over to the break side. It's great work from the Australians. They're really looking fired up. And that is half time here. Game two of the three match test match series. Of course, New Zealand up 1 0 at the moment. Australia taking half, which will be positive for them. 8-5. Here's that throw again from Tom Boyle. He wants it the whole time. He's not looking at anything else. It's a lovely throw. Everoni artist, uh, just a little dink enough to get some space. Um, it's got to be fantastic having to throw a like Boyle on your team. Oh, you can run anywhere who hit you. Some of the nicest, uh, nicest flicks, nicest hammers in, in uh, Australian Youth Ultimate, without a doubt. He was showing me his... Uh, lefty backhand huck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's <laughs> it coming along? <laughs> oh, look. We just can't. No, it's just too good. Too good? Too good. No, it's looking very solid. Oh, really? Game ready. Oh, nice. Well, I hope to see it out there somewhere on the field. Lefty high release, you said? Lefty huck. Lefty huck. Okay. It probably got the high release as well. Let's, let's not mess around. Mm. That is half time. Here. Yeah. At the Trans Tasman, Callan Park, some highlights from the first half for you to enjoy during this short break.
Rory Coxall Bagaki. I don't think any relation to the Ragaki family, as it's not spelt the same. <laughs> it's a completely different name, but sounds similar, so that's something. We're about to come back out in the second half. <laughs> New Zealand just have their hand up, ready to go. <laughs> Australians still in the huddle. They're caught napping a little bit, I think, the Australians. <laughs> bit of a leisurely half time. Whitlock's ready to go. How about uh, Coxall Bagaki? Yeah, Kongsu Bagaki looks pretty ready to go as well. The Australians still not even... Still don't even have a seven on the line, yeah. and the New Zealanders have had their hand up for a little while. I think I just heard a advisor whistle. Okay, one whistle, that means... No, I'm not sure. <laughs> one of them means you have to go. I think it's three whistles. We'll find out. Here we go. Whitlock with the throw, with the pull. Second half is on its way. Scores at 8-5 to Australia. Disc in Matt Hanna's hands. Off to Prendergast. Utility for this Australian team. Finds Lally cutting out the stack. Pumps it long. Alan the Kid Kid. Can he do it? Oh, not quite. Just not enough legs on that disc, I think. Anywhere in his vicinity, he would get, if possible. He does love a layout. Alan the Kid Kid. Lally with a very distinctive act throw action yeah. stamps that foot yeah he does he does stamp the foot the line Lily the line it does look a bit like a line these days we look again walking up to the line he's the man the New Zealanders want with the disc initiating cut from Russell Sider is looked off as it goes deep to Fitzpatrick Cockrum Julio on his back he uh, digs it up to himself yeah, he's but playing he's playing a bit of the tipsies there with himself. Lally looking. Finds Jones back to Lally. Looking downfield. He's a hustler. Always he hustling. Prendigas looks downfield as well. Love the aggressive looks from the uh, Australian handlers. Lally just moving it around, getting every second at the moment. Australians just churning through the middle of the field. Lovely break. Oh, it hits Jones. But that's a great grab from Julio. He's kept it up there, Matt Hanna. He's got Lely back. Gets up well. He's a bit stuck at the moment. Looking to generate something with a throw. Prendergast. Can't miss. Here's Harry Graham. A goal out of half for the Australians. 9-5. They'll be pretty happy with that one, I reckon. That takes the buffer out to four. Takes the buffer out to four. I reckon it's also, uh, they'd be really happy about the style of play. Uh, they just kind of Yeah, looked pretty control. comfortable, didn't they? Yep. I'm uh, seeing a lot more flow through the, the middle of the field. Yep, some great breaks there from Lely. Good inside coming up here. And his uh, little get out of jail across the stack worked. <laughs> yeah. Very I think it was to Matt Hanna, but it just happened to hit Jono Jones on the way through. <laughs> Making it a bit difficult. Do well to catch it, Hanna. Doesn't mind a layout. Oh, yeah. Is he a uh, club member? Uh, uh, Matt Hanna plays for Einbach, Einbach, club in Castle Hill, yep. uh, or from the northwest. Has been there for a few years. One of the more experienced players there now. Uh, he's played two, potentially three, under 
18s, uh, youth nationals for, for New South Wales. I think he was some kind of vice captain or co-captain with Nick Lowy this year. So the disc goes up. Great throw, Lowy. Good chase down. Whitlock with the disc once again. He's a safe pair of hands. Back to Newman. And the two of them happy to dish it back and forth. Bringing McEwen into the action now. Letting him have a go. And he'll give it straight back to Newman. Not a lot happening downfield for the New Zealanders. Really cramped. Oh, it's a good break there through the cup. Getting a bit of movement now. McEwen. Swings it right across to Newman. Oh, Scuba. I'll have to see some inventive throws. Yeah, quite happy just to just to hold the disc, the New Zealanders. Might need to start getting it moving a bit more. Got an option over the cup to the far side of the field if they can hit it. But that is with the difficult wind. Gonna be quite a tricky shot. Driscoll now with the disc. Swings it back around. Opening up the field a little bit, the New Zealanders now swinging it across. Very patient offense. The Australian Cup working quite hard. New Zealand intent to just swing it back and forth. Lovely scuba there from Whitlock. Oh! Through the gap, not quite sure what happened there. I think oh, fingernails from Boyle manages just to tip the disc enough off balance for the uh, New Zealand player to lose grip. That's right, Boyle walking it up to the field now, marching it up the line actually. He's got a few options <laughs> deep and he punts it straight away. It's high, floaty, I it think it's going to come in. back in. There's lots of bodies under it. Paddy Graham's one of them. Oh, Graham got up but just couldn't quite grab it. Yeah, just about every player on the field ready for that one. <laughs> there was one in the Terra game. I don't know if you saw, there was about eight hands on the disc all at once. Love a good contest. Paddy Graham wasn't far away from that one. And now the New Zealanders have to go back. It's a more patient offense. Just working it, working it so calm. Australians have got them on the sideline that they want. Mm. They've trapped them a few times there, but the New Zealanders don't seem very phased. They're not panicking on the disc at all. Oh. Inventive blade. Starting to get some movement now. As it goes to Ford. Kimmer now on the sideline. Oh, hammer over the top. Oh, nearly behind the back catch there from Burns. Unlucky. Hodgson with the D. Tommy Boyle whips it through to Hodgson. That is a great throw from Tom Boyle. Hodgson whips it through to Fed. Oh, that is sensational. That is sensational <laughs> offense from the Australians. Two bull flicks. Gee, look. Nine five. It was starting to blow out now. I was uh, I was about to comment on how they've got their uh, their experienced wingers. They got um, on one wing, Hodson on the other wing on defense. But look, the def the turnover yeah. in those two guys just fire on offense as well. Two passes to the middle and to the sideline in the in the zone. Great to see some great ultimate frisbee happening out here today in Callum Park. It's showing some uh, strong transition there because that's uh, you know they've come off the off the Dennis, uh, and scored so quickly. It's got to be disheartening. To New Zealand, you yeah. just held the disc for what 20, 30 passes. I think I said it was nine five before. It's actually ten five. So the Australians with five point lead now. Really starting to blow out a bit. Sixty minutes played, only twenty minutes to go until time cap. The Australians looking like they're in a pretty good position, but I think we should count out the New Zealanders. It was a similar comeback in the last game that we saw. Great throw from Nick Hodgson for the goal. Yeah, I think we've um, seen both the first men's game, second women's game, um, big comebacks. Yep, yep. That's still, it's still happening. It's a great rundown. Damon has made that throw very difficult. Whitlock bit unhappy with his receivers, I think. He's not getting the movement he wants. Goes out to Link later. Whitlock over the top to Rolf. Lovell in the background. Central foul call there. Nope. Nope. Going to play on. It's a turn. 
Yeah, just look a bit a bit stuck with that zono, the New Zealanders. I love that the Australians have uh, a different kind of zono, zone defence to throw to there. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, just keeping it fresh, keeping it changing. It adds that easy disc under to Kid. He's just got legs all day. Butler looks down the line. Boy Butler, what's he going to produce, Tom Butler? Oh, nice swing. O'Hagan to the oh. space. Alex Brough, unlucky. I'd like you to drop that one. It's in the basket. Beat his man, I think. Yep, yep, yep. Just, just unfortunately couldn't connect. Whitlock with the disc. I think he's going to look long pretty early on. Whitlock, he's not happy with this movement at the back. Gets it in power position. Someone's got to go. Driscoll is the man, but it's turned over. Seth Lovell with the disc. <laughs> Looks for a pushy. Oh, instead throws a bladey flick to Damon. Oh, that's a great take. As a fantastic catch from Prendergast under the pressure of Nicholas Whitlock from New Zealand. It's a great snag. Saves the day. Seth may be a little bit lucky on that one to come <laughs> away with the assist. I think we've said that a couple of times this game. Yeah. Yeah, well, I do love um, the potential go. push pass he thought about. <laughs> yeah. Probably good that he didn't, but... Uh, oh, that is a great catch from Prendergast. Very difficult. Must be a high stall count there. Coming over the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Coming over the shoulder, yep. trailing edge. Beautiful. I've been Beautiful so impressed with Prendergast. Mm, he's been he playing is. really well. Great run down on that yep. pull. Really put the New Zealanders under a lot of pressure. Yep. It's now 11 5. So creeping closer towards 15, the, the points cap for this game. Starting to look quite comfortable out there, the Australians. The New Zealanders haven't wrestled back that momentum for quite a while. Patrick Graham with the pull. Been pulling fairly decently today. He has been. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. I think he's on the right side. Mm. He's, got a, he's got a nice blade. So if he can if he can rip it, this win might carry it over to the far line and make it a really difficult setup for the New Zealanders. Here we go. Oh, that's a good bit of float. Yeah, it's just floating over to that sideline for Newman to pick up. Sorry, that's Newman now with the disc. That was Luke Mercer. Luke Mercer now. Cramped by this by this wall. Nick Lelly in the middle of it. Gee, it's a difficult cup to throw around. A lot of size in it. Comes out to Driscoll now. Just moving it. Newman at the back. Mercer pops it over the top to Hamish Ford. Moves out wide to Rolf now. Rolf, one of the experienced players on this New Zealand side. As they start to get a little bit of movement through the cup and around the cup. Oh, really cramped in there at the moment. I think something might be exciting happening in the AFL. <laughs> getting a... Getting a Bit of noise from the from the TV located nearby. But stay watching the Trans Tasman series if you are at the moment. Just tape the AFL. There'll be another one next year. <laughs> Trans Tasman. My, my partner's uh, very happy with what's happening on the TV at the moment. Yep. South Australian boys. We're in direct competition with one of the biggest events in Australia of the year. That's right, the poor AFL would have to compete with one of the biggest events in Australia of the year. The Trans Tasman competition. Nick Lely looking out to Jones. Oh, Ooh, looks him off. off. The open cut. Yeah, would have hit it. Tom Boyle is going to throw it though. Hodgson's deep. He's going to have to lay out. Ooh. How did Boyle re release from between the knee and the head of the <laughs> defender? I don't know. I have no idea how Tom Boyle releases a lot of his throws. Came out pretty nice. Just a little bit too much on it for, for Hodgson, I think. Valiant effort, but couldn't quite get there. It is interesting this uh, Australian zone has used different players in the wall. Mm. Most of the game. Yeah, well, such a tall wall there at the moment. With still having very experienced wings in Boyle and Hodgson. I mean, there's not a lot of people who want to throw around or through Nick Lurley. A lot of pressure in that far corner. That's the difficult corner to get it out of. But they do, the New Zealanders. Center it briefly. I mean, just trap themselves again. Yeah, bailout hammer. 
really had to come. The pressure was really building. Boyle picks up the disc. Got Hodgson easy into the middle, but just holds it for a second. Hits Jono Jones. He then hits Hodgson. Good reach there for the grab. Looks off a few. Swings it around to Lely. Oh, Lely's free child move. Hasn't come off. Hodgson airs it out. It's over Graham, but that's all right. Because the second the Graham's going to yep. catch it. Yeah. Over Paddy. Head high for Harry. It's the Australians just really on a roll now. 12-5. Nice throw from Hodgson. Don't think it was in his intended receiver, though, or his intended throw, really, to be honest. Yes. Oh, sometimes when you, uh, you're feeling confident and got the luck, you just ride it. Just trust uh, you, your uh, receivers to do, do the job. To pull it yeah. down. New Zealand is really starting to um, look like they've lost a little bit of energy. The guys on the sideline look pretty gassed. The guys on the line, all hands on hips, hands on head. The Australians look like just one big unit, don't they? Not just the seven players, they look like the whole squad. Yeah, it's a, a really good team atmosphere going on among training camp. Um, obviously, we don't get the benefit of seeing the New Zealand training camp. I'm sure they've been working very hard in their training preparation for this uh, but the last two days we've had um, training in Sydney nearby ground we had the female squad the male squad training next to well, next to each other on the fields and uh, they like that yep yes and it's fantastic it's just really great for, for the team spirit uh, you would have seen them earlier getting around each other yeah yep Tommy Butler about to let it go pretty nice throw I think actually it's a brick so it's not a very nice throw Tommy Sorry, mate. He knows. He knows he cooked it. Looks a bit unhappy with himself there. Retracted compliment. <laughs> it's going to be from the sideline, which is not ideal for the Australian D. But still, all the pressure on the New Zealanders at the moment to get it moving. Look, it's a small one from the Australians here. Look for a lot of harassment from Alan Kidd on the mark here. He's going to be really yeah. aggressive. Look out. Swings down to Rolf. Got a few options. Oh, doesn't hit any of them. Bit stuck on the disc now. Ooh, nearly a spill there from Coxal Bugaki. My boy. Goes to Fitzpatrick Cockrell. Number 21 now, Max Benter Lynch. A lot of hyphenated names in the New Zealand squad. That's a great grab from Fitzpatrick Cockrum, and he's got Coxall uh, Bagaki in the corner. Oh, Feng gets up. Not Feng, sorry, Lachlan Eichner gets up. Very big. Difficult there for the New Zealander to, to toe the line and reel that one in. Poor Coxall Bagaki. Lachlan Eichner just gets up. Huge. Smacks that one out of the sky. I've been playing Frisbee for seven months. Eichner. That is incredible to see that uh, kind of athleticism skill. Yep, Tommy Butler. A bit stuck in that cut. Yeah, MCT. and it's a uh, turnover, forced down the line. Number 81, Linklater to pick it up. Daniel Linklater swings it back to the middle. Whitlock there as always. Fitzpatrick Cockrum gets it out wide. Tries to squeeze it in, and Rolf with the goal. A valiant effort there from James Walker, I think. Yep. But it wasn't to be. The New Zealanders back on the board. It is 12-6 now. 70 minutes played, 10 minutes till hard cap, till time cap. Not sure if it's hard or soft. I think it's hard. Yeah, great bit from Walker. <laughs> I think he spent uh, half the game on the ground, sprawled. <laughs> So a few players like that. Tom Butler got a bit of a crowd growing. A few people just yelling encouragement at him from the sideline. I think he's a bit unhappy with his, uh, his pull. New Zealand is looking uh, quite confident now. Bit of a, sh bit of a shift. Yeah, the, sh the shoulders are back up, the yep. head's up. Just a, a bit of a change in body language.
the Australian unit still getting to the line every time. Bit slow in getting off the field though. Look. Just sauntering off. Like I said earlier, I want a, I want a, uh, a jog off, please. Yeah, Kid and Eichner are just, just really having a chat with each other. Not too stressed. 12-6, they, they're looking pretty relaxed out there, the Aussies. Pull comes up now. It's going to be fielded by O'Hagan. It's a, looks like a, a Ballarat handle line up there. They're very, very familiar with each other. It's Hodgson on the, the under. Center. Looks to pump it. Long. On the under, oh, Seth. Seth. Well. Paddy G. Oh, John and Jones, not far away. Surprised he didn't hurt himself on that layout. Looks like a pretty rough contact with the ground. With a, uh, a player coming over the top as well. Mm. Not comfortable. It's Whitlock with the disc. Safe hands for the New Zealanders. New Zealanders. The Catapo. Now we uh, managed to find out what Catapo means. We think it's this, Spider. It's, uh, so we've got a, a page here. It says Catapo. It's got everyone's name. And it's got a little spider in the corner. I think it's a, a, spiner, a spider. Native to New Zealand. Whitlock is a little bit stuck at the moment. Gets it out eventually. It Jeez, he's lucky. Russell's side has really bowed him out there. Stall count called. Stall out. Stall out called. Disc will be returned. Mm. Were you counting? Can't say I was. No, no, that was I. It's going to be a little bit of discussion here. Whitlock has been stalled out once already, I think. I think earlier in the first game. By Hodgson as well, I believe. We did we did some analysis on it, and it was an 11 and a half second stall, according to Mike Palmer. So well and truly, 10 at plus. Yeah, well and truly stalled. Contested stall, back in on nine. New Zealanders get it moving again. With Rowan Burns. And it's gone, gone deep. Oh, Hagen comes away with it after a bit of a. Scrappy D from the Australians. Graham's got it. Boiler gives it a rip. Out to Hodgson. Bit of float on it. Hodgson's going to have to lay. He would have laid right into a spectator. So good thing he didn't. He also probably would have been out of the field. Tommy Boyle just putting a little bit too much juice on those ones. Yeah, he's, uh, I reckon Boyle's influenced the first half. Really big. A little bit less the second half. Yeah, they're looking nice though. Yeah. Just a little bit too much just on them. Just a little bit too much gas, but he'll uh, he'll just tweak it. He'll be ready for next time. As the chip packet rolls across the field, reminiscent of a tumbleweed. As the New Zealanders struggle to get some cuts moving. Oh, that pressure! It's some really the gonna downfield pressure. Those uh, trying to squeeze out of gaps. That disc. Boy's going to cross. Pick it up. He's going to look for that inside. Option which is not there. Oh, it is now, yeah, maybe. Prendergast just works his defender side to side. That was Graydon Scott who he was being marked by. Eventually gets away. Tom Boyle punches it in. I think it was Boyle's pirouette that sold his <laughs> marker. The twinkle toes Boyle. Brings the score to 13 6. 13 6, yep. Yep, just creeping forward towards that 15 point cap. Yeah, that pirouette from Boyle. I've been done by it many a time. You just you just want to go with him to the, the backhand side and then he jumps back over. It's a very sneaky move. Of course, uh, Greta Murdoch, an assistant coach with the, uh, with the, the boys squad. She also coaches um, Ballarat. Yeah. Um, a season, it was her first season coaching them. She's got a lot of those boys on this team as well. She knows them really well. Like I said before, you had handling um, Anne O'Hagan. I think it was um, Tom Boyle and uh, Damon Prendergast. They're just three of about six or seven of the Ballarat boys who've just come through the system together. Yep. And uh, you can see them being around this kind of scene for years. Yeah. Now, you've come into campaigns. How important is knowing you? Oh, those players from other clubs. It's it's huge if you uh if you have connections with uh, other players uh, coming into a setup like an Australian team is that really really important. Obviously you build them over the campaign, but if you if you start with a strong foundation like these Ballarat Ballarat boys seem to have already, it's a really strong position to be in. As Julio Manhana gives it a rip, might just drift out. 
Oh, yep. Just drifting out there for the brick. New Zealand is bringing it back in. Number 81, Daniel Linklater. He's going to have to link right now because it is 12-6. 13-6, sorry. New Zealand is really under the pump here. Linklater. Bail out to Whitlock. Whitlock and Linklater. A bit of a one-two action. Oh, Lely running through. I don't know if you got the man there, but no discussion. So it must have been clean. Lely came into this week uh, a little bit of an injury cloud. Started off training, but it's definitely yeah. not there now. Those legs are working really well. Yeah, I think he was telling me he's been a bit sick during the week. A bit sick. Oh, unfortunate miscue there for the Australians. Just getting a little bit sloppy yard you'd have to say towards the end of the game yes and uh, the they wind might is picking feel, up yeah that breeze coming over their shoulder it's going to the left of, your, of the screen Whitlock difficult throw to Fitzpatrick Cockrum with another difficult throw to Hamish Ford who lets it rip Lely underneath it though you got to back him in those situations he's a tall boy he's been playing for a long time he picks it up and he's going to jack it straight to Nichols damn <laughs> maybe not that's the wrong it wouldn't have been cool if I was it. right, though. Very <laughs> Cut from the Walker dump space now from Walker. Ooh, a bit of trouble. Lely. Unlucky from McEwen. Big way out D. Lely comes. Cucumber. Hannah looking down the line to Walker. Looks him off. Now, fake, fake. He's in a little bit of trouble, but finds a Lely. Stretched arms out high. Looking down the line. Looking a little confused, sending signals. <laughs> he was looking a bit confused, though, wasn't he? <laughs> Swings around to Nichols. He punches it in for the goal. Yeah, Love to know what Lily was doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like we forgot where he was there for a moment. He was just a kid at the park holding a frisbee. Not sure what was going on. Again, dump, swing, score. Yeah, very successful for the Australians. It's a great dump set that they've been doing. The dump, clearing up the line. Getting a feel coming back into that dump space. Been working like a treat. 14-6. So we, we move even closer to the conclusion of this game now. You will be seeing the half dab from the game advisors, I think. It is game point. Which gives us one of the best hand signals in our sport. As we see just on the replay there, Lely maybe not as close to that D as we initially thought. Number 25, Jack Doyle for New Zealand was... Nearly getting it over the top of him. Nonetheless, 14-6. Australians coming out in a pretty strong position. Of course, if Australia scores this point, they level the series one all. Makes a huge game tomorrow. Huge game tomorrow morning. If you can get down to the field, we highly recommend it. We are here at uh, Belmain Road Sporting Ground. So potentially called Callum Park on Google Maps. Got a few different names as the New Zealanders field at Whitlock with the disc. Oh, calm pass. Calm offense here from the New Zealanders. Just working it around. Rowan Burns hits it out to Newman. Coxall Bagaki with the catch and the goal, but there was a pick call. Not sure who the pick was on. I think it was maybe a call quite a while ago because Hodgson's walking back to the stack. No, he's not. He's walking back to Coxhill Bagaki. Let's see if we can see the pick here. Ooh, not sure I could see the pick. But nonetheless, the disc is back in. Coxhill Bagaki with the grab. He's done well under the pressure from Hodgson there. That is time cap as well. It doesn't matter either way it's game to 15 game to 15 nonetheless it is 14-7 at the moment Australians with all the cards really they're all sprinting to the line look at them excited to be playing for their country and so you should be on a lovely Saturday well it's not that lovely it's pretty windy and uh, overcast actually but reasonably well temperatured Sydney day Seem like they're enjoying themselves out there, the Australians. New Zealanders 
They have uh, their own quiet manner. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe it's a bit to harsh to say they're not enjoying themselves. They, they look like they're still having a good time. Playing some great ultimate. Of course, there is another game following this one. Immediately after, that will be the, the Southern Terror, the women's Australian under-18 team, taking on Kahu, the New Zealand under-18 team. Yeah, the women's team really looked like they, uh, they found their straps in the second half. Um, kind of settling into their play, um, getting a little bit more consistent connections. Now they're going to look to carry that on. Yep. was a universe point in their first game as well. Yeah. So Excellent. See how that one plays out as Keyes picks it up. Straight to Walker in the middle of the field. Paddy Graham making the under move. Bit of a strange position to see Pat Graham coming under, but he gets it nonetheless. There's a cross field shot to Jono Jones. He's going to have to lay out, and he does. He catches it for the goal. The Australians flood finish. the field. Taking the series to one apiece. Jono Jones with a great grab. He's getting stacked on at the moment. No fun if you're at the bottom. <laughs> Look, that throw made it uh, need to be something really impressive to reel it in. Pat yep. Graham being uh, you know, a quick back end release. So 15 7 that final score. Oh, great way to end that it. Again. A great shot initially from James Walker over to Graham, who then throws it straight away to Jono Jones, who turnstiles himself, wrong foots himself, and gets there anyway. That's a great layout. Great catch. Deservedly happy with that one. Are the Australians. So it's one apiece. The, the, the series decider is going to be tomorrow morning. So if you are in Sydney or in wider New South Wales and you think you can get here by tomorrow morning, please, please do. It's going to be a great, great game. We'd love to have as many people down here as possible. Absolutely not, Gus. We've been treated to a game. Oh, Australia's we have. Uh, come out firing. Absolute treat of a game. Don't go anywhere, because I reckon there's an absolute treat coming up after this as well. Kahu taking on Southern Terror. It's also one up to New Zealand in that series as well. So it's going to be an interesting game. Absolutely. So uh, my name's Stevan. Gus, thank you very much. Thanks for watching.